Oh my god, a bug in my afro? This is awesome. <laughs> I'm in Florida, dog. This is wild. Oh, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. tell me about your mother. How you feeling, man, after uh, oh, man. obsession? Thank you so much for making this feel like home. What the <laughs> f is going on here? It's like free love out here. Yeah, we love it, man. So yeah. thank you. Anyway, back to your parents. I'm talking way too yeah, much. Yeah, dude, we're I'm so <laughs> in it right now. We're, we're gonna, gonna make it, boys. <laughs> anyway, tell me about your uncle. <laughs> Wow. Here we go, baby. Welcome to the Sugar Shack Podcast with the one and only Andy fucking Frasco. Oh, I appreciate go, it. Baby. Thanks for having me. Come on, everybody. Give it up for Andy Frasco in the U.S. All right, thank you. Wow. We decided to light one up and get rolling. I'm not going to lie. This go. does feel like a cult. This whole thing kind of feels like a cult. You're waiting it. for the catch, right? You're waiting for it to I'm waiting like, for y'all to like put me up as a pig or the something. The horror movie like, plot yeah. line shifts or something. Yeah. <laughs> Andy this thought is so it was great, just a man. normal music venue. How many how many times do you do this a month? We try to we sh our quote is like three times a month is what we shoot for. Yeah. It's, it's fucking awesome. killer. And we've got it opened up to the public. And um, thank you guys so much for for coming out. Shout out to the experienced guests for being here, friends and family. Shout out to Chef Greg. Come on if you enjoyed dinner. Chef Greg! And if you enjoy the Oreo stuffed pancakes that are going God around damn. right now. That's from Chef Greg's brain. And um, this man probably takes, uh, you know, like psychedelics. Have you thought about a Oreo stuffed pancake? Hey, mushrooms all day, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah. you already know. Shout out to mushrooms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for being here. How you, how you feeling, man, after uh, oh, man. session? It was so cool. I mean, this is all so surreal. Like, I've always watched these shows. I thought it was just going to be very sterile. Like, going to be like... Right. Get in, get out, get the fuck out of here. But you guys like <laughs> made this feel like we're family and like I just met you motherfuckers a couple, a couple yeah. minutes ago. So like thank you so much for making this feel like home. Dude, absolutely. That's what it's all about. I mean, that's what our heart with Sugar Shack. I mean, these guys from the beginning, we started nine years ago. And I mean, it's just about giving artists something that maybe they don't get out there when you're just on the yeah. grind, you know? And they've always had such a heart to be hospitable. And now that we're able to do this at this level, man, it's right. just... It's beautiful. Yeah, we love it, man. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. it. It makes me want to go back to Florida even more. Than, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. How many times have you been in, like, or have you spent time in Florida? I've only played three shows in Florida. Yeah, yeah. We did uh, Hulaween up in Swanee. Oh, yeah. And then we did... Uh, the COVID, uh, where everyone was in their pods during mm. uh, the Swanee Music Festival. But, yeah, we don't really... It's pretty far for us to come out here and yeah. uh, do some shit. We did a show in Gainesville, too, yeah. which was kind of... It was cool, but no one showed up. So this is this is more people yeah. than the other show <laughs> that we played at. So. It's a weird uh, place for certain bands, right, to break right. into this kind of a market. So it yeah. either works or it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, and we've been in the jam scene for so long that yeah. they don't really... Like, there's, like, the St. Augustine Amphitheater we've done once. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah I would love to keep coming back. It's, yeah. Uh, everyone, well, it, the vibe you're is welcome right. at Sugar Shack, whatever you want. Right. Don't tell like, me that. <laughs> I want to live out in this motherfucker, dog. <laughs> yeah, right? That's what Kevin and John say from Little Stranger. They yeah. want to live out. And your homies with them? You, you know yeah, them? Yeah, those How are our you know boys. Them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we took them. They opened for our tour for, uh, we did a three-month tour last fall. Yeah. Now they're blowing up, which yeah. is so I'm I'm so happy. Dude, I remember seeing your your tour video reels. Those were fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Like what, what happened, happened last, last night? <laughs> You'll have to see it if you have it. It's basically like Andy and Bo or somebody, yeah. their manager, like he's like limping, you know, and it's yeah. like what happened last night. And then it's all this cutback footage to the night before of them just fucking raging. <laughs> and like Bo's on a mattress, like getting cake put on his face on yeah. crowd surfing or something. And yeah, it's yeah. just crazy. Little strange. They're antagonizers because they've been on. Yeah. They've been in the reggae scene where everyone like just drinks like purified water, and just like <laughs> chills out and like does yoga and shit. Then they right. come out on tour with us and we're just like full blown alcoholics. Yeah. <laughs> so like they're they egged us on. So fuck you, little stranger. I yeah, know you, I know what you That's did. That's yeah. y'all are a, a deadly mix for sure. Oh my I god, mean. those are my those are my boys. They're my uh, yeah. I call them my sons, even though they're older <laughs> than me, because uh, they're they're just. Uh, they're the sweetest. They're the sweetest boys on the planet. Can I keep in this, dude? Is please cool? light it up. Light right, it up. It. Yeah. Absolutely. Are mushrooms legal here? Are they legal? They're not legal, but I feel like you know, it's a gray area. Logan, can I get a couple mushrooms? Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, the Laker game's on in an hour. We might as well trip Dick for it. Can I? I can I get in on this? Can yes, I get a count yeah. on on this? 
I'll take a little I mean, cap or this something. This is the thing, like, uh, you know, like, there's a bad stigma about mushrooms, you know? There's, yeah. like, they think that it's just, like, a, a, a gateway drug, but right. the only thing that's going to gateway is uh, mental health, and yeah. it's going to help us get through our depression and get through our things. So I was, like, I was, like, always worried about taking antidepressants because I, I didn't want to, like, kind of, like, get dragged down by it. I and, mean, like, I'm just too hyper as it is. So I started, because I was going through this, like, uh, uh, you know, I was... I've been on the road for 15 years, so we've been doing like 250 shows a year for the last 15 years. And year 11, I felt the, I'm depressed. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't know where to go. And I didn't want to, so like I stopped taking like, you know, powdered drugs for the most part. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> as much, I used to take it a lot. Now I'll just take it every, you know, seven days or eight yeah. days. Um, <laughs> right, you spread it out. Yeah, it's I better. spread it out. Yeah, yeah. But... I used to take it all the time, and that was like really lowering my dopamine. And so I, I took, I started uh, microdosing mushrooms, and it helped me get back out of the cloud because, like, when you're depleting your body, like we do, like I see it in Little Stranger too. We just like we try to bring the hardest show we can, mm -hmm. and then we wake up and we Toast. realize, yeah, yeah. And then you're, you're trying to get dopamine through Instagram likes, and yeah, and it's just not good. So. The mushrooms woke me up to uh, say, hey, you don't really need to, like, have these drugs to keep you up. You could actually just have your friends and your happiness to keep you up. Yeah. But I don't know. I Shout out to mushrooms. That's all. That's shout that's out that's to that's mushrooms. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got to say, I, I, I have been on antidepressants, and I've also transitioned off and, and started microdosing mushrooms specifically. And it's a night and day difference, yeah. especially with how something's processed in the body. You're talking about something synthetic versus something yeah. natural. Where but some people need the antidepressants. So they, is, I mean, if you, in those extreme cases. Yeah. But I mean, we're giving it out like candy these days. I, yeah, I was like, I was. I remember my mom's like, you want to take, I was like eight years old. And they're like, do you want to take, oh, thank you, Logan. What? I appreciate it. Do you want to try this? Yeah, it's 0. .25. Okay. I feel like I'm like a spokesperson I'll, I'll take, for I'll mushrooms right I now. Can, I can jam two. Yeah, take two. Yeah, thank you. They're nice. They're mellow. Yeah. They're penis envies, I think. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's, it, I don't know what I was talking about. That's Wait, the you're going to take them with me, right? You're going to take them yeah, yeah. with me? Yeah, I've already taken three, so I'll take two more. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> you're just stacking it. Yeah. We're going to do like a little cheers or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, yeah. this is... I'm, am I going to jail after this? I don't know. We can always cut it. You All know right, what I mean? Cheers. cheers. No, no, right. no, no, fuck it. No, no, no. Let, no, no. All right. Anyway, mm -hmm. tell me about your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Now it gets weird. <laughs> well, you don't want to know about Tell me my about mother. your relationship with your family. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> do you want to know about that? Yeah, no, I do. It, no. You do? Isn't it funny, like, when you take mushrooms, you talk about, like, family stuff. When you take cocaine, you just, like, talk about light bulbs. And, yeah, like, I don't Pieces I'm not as familiar with the cocaine. I know it looks like maybe I should be, but oh, the mushrooms and LSD definitely acid. Oh, acid? Oh yeah. I'm too scared to take acid. It's like what? a, I don't know. Eight hours sounds scary. Try twelve. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. That. No, 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 no. <laughs> you definitely the mushrooms have to bundle like up. three hours. You go to bed. You know, watch yeah. a little porn. Go to bed. Get out of here. Yeah. You know, it's like. The acid is like you're, you're thinking about what you, the thing yeah. you said when you're, you're nine on, years you're old on to that your third grade for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah no, nah, fuck that. But <laughs> if you've got a lot of shit planned throughout the day, it can be great. You drop in at like 9 a.m., it's, it's good. It's a good day. Go to the beach. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Kayak? I, yeah. I, I live in Denver. Like they, they all like feel like they invented acid. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like... You don't take some. Oh, sorry. Here you're you go. Good. <laughs> they're like... They're all like doing like... We're going to take L and uh, just stare at a tree. Yeah. It's like that's our Tuesday. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm chill. <laughs> I got so is it, a, it pretty prevalent in, in Yeah, Colorado, they like, uh, in Denver? I mean, like the great thing that, uh, the, the reason why I moved to Denver was I lived in Kansas City where like you can't even smoke weed out there. And uh, so I moved to Denver and they're so um, progressive about, you know, it's like if you're doing it and you're not like being an asshole, you can right. take, you can do what you you got to do. And you know, with Red Rocks and everything, right. it's like a hiking. It's not like they're driving anywhere. So right, right. It's it's nice. Yeah, it's so nice, man. I I remember when uh, my my wife and I just got married back in September, and we we went to Utah and we brought the the gang out with us. Eddie made an awesome wedding video for us. Oh and shit. hell yeah, it's awesome. And uh, and uh, for our honeymoon, we went to Zion National Park. 
And I, I mean, it's just burned into my memory. We both, we both dropped in. I dropped some acid, and she took some mushrooms, and then we hiked up to Angel's Landing, which is this really, really cool Hold on. kind of you're, you're scaling like... trail. And I'm like, like on the on the come up, lifting off while I'm like on the side of a mountain. I was like, this is, was not a good idea. But <laughs> once we got to the top, it was so fucking sick, dude. Because like the canyons were like moving, like like. Like yeah. water, you know, like the water paint scapes and shit. I'd be was, scared shitless. You'd be by yourself on dr- like on an ass, just like <laughs> on I mean, the top of the people, mountain. There's people okay. everywhere. You know okay. what I mean? It's like a national park. It's like a tourist thing. You know, so there's checkpoints and stuff. Yeah, but I, I don't know. know. I, I like one time I like watched my homie like shit himself. I'm like, I'll never do that again. I'm like, <laughs> this is the. It was I, we were it were 18 <laughs> years yeah, old. It's, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. For yeah, sure. yeah, it's like I've it, never it experienced you, that. But. I was like. We were, yeah, it was, I was, I did it once. My parents were gone from, uh, fuck it, I'll just say the story. Okay. <laughs> we're parents, in it. We're in it we're, now. This I was is 18, gonna be like my the buddy most... turned 18. And like, uh, you know, like I grew up in the valley in LA where it's like, just where like the porn's made and stuff. And like, you know, just like lo-fi porn everywhere. And like, so we, we were just hanging out. <laughs> And uh, we were like, we took some LSD and like, we're like, we never saw, we never really had a stripper before. So we like all like collected our money and got a stripper <laughs> for the house. And this is at my parents' house. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And, and so he, there's a Wait, stripper. Wait, you took LSD for this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, LSD. so this is why you're scared now. Hell yeah. Taking it, yeah. Oh yeah, because it was at my house. You know, yeah. like when you have a party at Paranoid your house and you're just anxiety, like this is my what first time stripper? taking it. There's a stripper in there. My parents are like, like I feel like my parents are just going to come home any yeah. second. And my friend is like, he, he's like, he didn't really, wasn't experienced. And he's just like, like shat himself outside. And I was just like, it was just a whole experience. And then my mom came home and we had to pretend like we were, it was just bad. So I will never do it again. After that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah it ruined you. Sounds like it ruined you for oh, sure. Oh, it taught me for fucking sure, dude. Yeah. I, I can't, I was like, every time I, I tried to make love on acid once and it just looked like we were just like both Skeletors. <laughs> We're just like, I'm like, this. How do people like exist? Like get on this? down with this. Because yeah. like Jerry Garcia will just like take. A, yeah. Because like I'm new to the jam scene. I was like an emo kid. So like when I was like oh, 19. Oh, dude, you were an emo kid. Yeah. Like I dude. never really drank or. Yeah. Did anything edge, bro. until I was yeah until yeah. I was like 19, 20, and then yeah. I started like opening for like Grateful Dead cover bands. I'm like, and then everyone's like, just taking just. drugs yeah. and like. <laughs> titties out I'm like what the fuck is going on here it's like free love out here and yeah. uh, and I was like this is this is the scene I need to be in yeah. <laughs> you were like I was I'm like, right here I've been hanging out with like sad people for way too long for this yeah, right. listening to My Chemical Depressed Romance people, and like right. Take It Back Sunday just like my heart bleeds <laughs> I'm like everyone's all happy and shit taking drugs and like titties are out like I'm in the wrong seat yeah so that that changed my life definitely. I don't know what this. What am I even talking about tonight? No, that's great. I love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's all kicking kick. in, right? It's all it's all coming together now. Anyway, back to your parents. <laughs> yeah, right. No way. We're moving on from that shit. <laughs> Absolutely not. My parents um, were paranoid as shit. Yeah. Yeah, they were um, like real estate brokers, and um, my mom was like this like neurotic Jewish lady. Like I had to take a walkie-talkie to the park and shit. Like got was, you right checking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, that was my vibe right. as a as a. And my, the park was like across the street. Like yeah. it was like it was fucked up. And so like I always I got that little neuroticism from my mom, and then I got my partying from my dad. Got you. Yeah, my dad would just like. It's such a crazy combo. It's crazy. Too. I didn't know he failed a drug test. When he was 70 years old. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know he didn't. He's like, he took cocaine. I'm like, he's like, I'm gonna, he's like, I'm like, dad, you're fucking 70 years old. It's like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> he's like, he's been so, he's like, I've been, I've been, I'm like, that's what I want to do. When I go down, just if I retire, okay. if, I, if I get a terminal in, illness or something, yeah. I'm taking everything. Fuck. Yeah, you're just going, you're going all the going way with deep, it. to the deep end. <laughs> yeah. My parents were pretty strict growing up. I grew up yeah. in like a pretty strict religious household, I would say. Really? For sure, yeah. I grew up as a church like, uh, kid, like a pastor's kid. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. yeah. Could you have sex? I mean, I did, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But no, I got like in trouble for that shit for sure. Uh, did they, yeah. they ever catch like you, they find some cum or something? Dude, dude, I definitely got busted watching porn before and that was, that was gnarly, What type bro. of porn do you watch? Well, at the time, yeah. definitely lesbian porn. Lesbian porn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now I, used, I stay away from that shit. I stay right, away from shout it. Shout out to that. Yeah. Porn. 
Porn's like destructive to the brain, in my opinion. But yeah. you know, when you're 16, <laughs> man, I used so to I used to have a baby phobia. So yeah. I used to beat off to pregnant porn because <laughs> I knew they couldn't get pregnant. So that was a fantasy of mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually true. My mom caught me. Oh my! I, I'm talking way too yeah, much. Yeah, dude, we're <laughs> so fucking in it right now. Let's fucking okay, go. I'll tell you, I got to tell you this story. I got this is a good story. I, my parents, we've been in the same house for like 20 years. And, you know, I used, actually, this is gross. I shouldn't talk. Yeah, fuck it. Okay. Damn, dude. So I, uh, I used to have like, um, you know, a, a sex problem. Not gotcha. a sex problem, but I used to beat off a shit to them. Yeah, I understand. And, it was like a compulsion. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. But, yeah, but I always, <laughs> I, I'm like so OCD that I'd always put the same, uh, the same, Towel or sock, yeah, I got you, or whatever, in yeah. the same drawer. Okay, <laughs> not All realizing right. that my parents might sell the house eventually. Okay, and uh, 15 years later, when they s- were gonna sell the house, yeah, like we gotta clean out Andy's room. No, and blah, blah blah. No sir. They found just like a paper machete of semen, of um, t-shirts. 15 year old. Just 15. Just... Yeah, it was like a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, t- how, how, what's your relationship like with your grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> great. I, she's great. We FaceTimed like last week. Oh, what shit. Great? Yeah, what about you? Mine are yeah. dead, but whatever. Damn. It's all good. Um, Damn. I wish they got to see this side of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd yeah. be horrified. <laughs> Well, dude, we, we, we love having you here so much. This has been such a special night already. I want to learn a little bit about, like, your, your music. You know, when did you start making music, I guess? When, was, when did your kind of career in this start where you were like, I want to do this and, and make this my life? Uh, in high school, I mean, I've, I, growing up in L.A., like, you had the opportunity, like, I wanted to be in the... I didn't start playing music until I was 19, but I was in the music industry. I was like, I faked my age at... Uh, 13 to work at Drive Through Records, it's like pop punk record label, cool. and I was uh, booking bands and marketing bands, and I was, I was, I've been the same height since I was like 13, so I was like managing bands and booking bands until I was like 18, and all the bands that I'd like manage, like I used to book uh, Paramore when back in the day, Newfound Glory, oh, uh, yeah, dude. all the oh yeah, Coral Springs, that's a Florida band. I fucked with Newfound Glory, that was my band, dude. <laughs> Those yeah. guys were nice, they were sweet. There's, uh, yeah, I, I low key thought they were in a Christian rock band for a second, but <laughs> like I didn't understand what Coral Springs was because I like, I, it was like they were like really optimistic and like they made me feel optimistic because we used to do the Warp Tour and stuff, and then uh, when 18, all these bands would break up or like move record labels, so I kind of like got in my head a little bit, so I was like I'm just gonna learn an instrument and market myself and manage myself and I. Uh, Found a band on Craigslist. I, I bought a van with my bar mitzvah. I had like eleven thousand dollars left for my bar mitzvah money, and I bought <laughs> a van. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> I was like, "What was your bar mitzvah like? like? Oh man, what was your theme? Did you have a theme for your bar mitzvah? Yes, it was Lakers. <laughs> of course, it was. <laughs> so let's talk about your Lakers obsession. Like, when did that? When did you start loving the Lakers as much as you do? Uh, I think I loved basketball. Up, yeah. I love basketball when I, when I met, uh, not met, but like when I first saw Shaquille O'Neal, like mm-hmm. this dude, this big old funny character yeah. that just destroyed dudes, you know, like yeah. I love that. And I just love basketball because it's a team effort and that's why I love being in a band because like you could do it solo, but you to really like execute as a band, you really have to learn how to breathe together. So mm-hmm. basketball was related to me like it was music. So mm-hmm. I love basketball. I loved, uh, but like at 19 when I finally played music, I, I'd only think in basketball terms. Like how to, like I was the point guard, didn't know how to solo, didn't know how to write songs. So I needed to find bandmates who could solo, who could write songs, who could have the backbone. And one by one, I found Sean on Craigslist uh, in Missouri. Wow. Uh, from his homie, uh, Corey Montgomery on Craigslist. And Corey's like, I'm not the right guy for this band, but I got this crazy dude, Sean Eccles, <laughs> that would be in the band. He jumped on. I met Ernie at a coffee shop at Starbucks. <laughs> I was like, Hell I want to yeah. be a band like Dave Matthews. He's like, I, I mean, I just quit school. <laughs> and he learned the fucking sax again. That was nice. And then I met Andy Avila. I knew your old drummer. You knew my old drummer. And he quit. He quit, yeah. And he's like, 
yeah. Yeah, he, he got yeah, me. Yeah, look at me now, bitch. Yeah, that was another Craigslist hire where he's like, oh, yeah, I went to USC. I'm like, oh, shit, like University of South Carolina was sick, sick. He's like, no, South Compton. <laughs> I was like, oh, he got me. Oh, fuck yeah, let's go. Get in the van. And then I met these boys, and uh, now we've been the band for 13 years. We've been wow. grinding it out, and uh, we're finally we're finally doing it. So it's cool. Hell yeah, let's go. They put up with my shit for a long time. <laughs> I, Cause I, for the first six years, I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to play an instrument. I'm the front man. I'm like they're like God fucking help my soul. They're like, why am I doing this? But you stuck it out. You knew I could make some money, so you're like, I appreciate that. Damn, I fucking love it. Yeah. He knew they like he's Jewish. He can make some money. Yeah. You fuck with the money side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell so yeah. where did the name in the UN come from? Well, we had a we had a bunch like I used to like um, Google Translate offers to like the Netherlands and Germany and stuff, and email all these bookers because like I knew I couldn't just play in the Midwest because that was the, the first six years. The only people who'd book me shows was like uh, Arkansas, Missouri. You know, um, Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana, and like, you know, just the Bible Belt. And I was like, the coasts aren't going to let me play, and I can't play in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, like six times, you know? So I was like, I'm just going to like Google Translate and hopefully get some shows in Europe. And we found a couple Dutch shows, and we found this Paris show, and we met these like 17 year old Dutch kids. (laughs) And like, do you want to be in our band? Like, so they were really, they were like really talented. Yelmer, Niels, and them, super good. Oh, sick. we used to be like eleven piece band. <clears throat> wow. Because we like we all knew we weren't gonna make money, but at least we're having fun and mm-hmm. drinking for free and like sleeping in the venues. Like we were yeah, we were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then um, and then I fucked up. I fucked up on the visa. I didn't know you had to have like you only could stay in America for sixty days. So I extended their trip to like sixty three days, and then they got um, banned from America. For uh, seven years. Whoa. Yeah. I, fu- I totally fucked You're like, up. like, well, see y'all later. Like, we're going to make it, boys. <laughs> we're like, we're going to take, you know, socialize the mountains. Ain't shit in this band. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be a grocery <laughs> store worker. You're going to be in a band. <laughs> Three and days later. And then they later. get deported back to yeah, the fucking right. Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, I was fucked up. And I, they Damn. don't really talk to me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But, Damn. Shout out to Yelmer and Renz. We love you, buddy. I, I <laughs> fucked up. I, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that, like, I thought, like, once you're in the country, like, yeah, fuck yeah, you're in America. Yeah. And no, it wasn't no, like that. No, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah, I fucked yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I realized so, that. So where, where, did you, where did you get, like, the idea to name your band because the UN? we had a bunch of German dudes in the band. We had a oh, bunch of you. Dutch dudes in the it's band. Like United, I see. So yeah. it's like a big, like, kind of global yeah. kind of idea. We got a Mexican dude. We got an Asian dude. We just got a, a white dude. <laughs> We got Sean, he's white as fuck. Um, <laughs> hey, white. We got everybody in this band. Hell yeah. Yeah. We used to have a black dude in the band, and he said, nah, fuck this. <laughs> I'm like, respect. I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, respect for that. sure. Yeah. Uh, dude, some of the stuff you played tonight was so good, and, and a lot of jams that we knew, but I, you told me earlier you got, were coming out with some new music, dude. So tell me about the new project that you oh, were working yeah. on. We got we we got a record deal. We never like this is a big we got a big record deal with uh, wow. Soundly Music and and uh, I'm pretty excited. Let's go. It's pretty cool. We normally uh, we normally have to self fund all our albums and we self fund the marketing and I'm all, so now we have a team which is cool and uh, I wrote this record uh, like in three weeks wow. uh, with a bunch of uh, musicians from Nashville and some with my band. We went to Nantucket for a week and. I'm really proud of this. This is the first record I'm not sick of. And like, when you write a record and you just listen to the same song over and over, you, you're like, right when the release comes out, you're like, fuck this album. And yeah. I, this is the first record I'm finally saying, uh, no, no, I'm, I really love it. So I'm yeah. excited about it. That's so, awesome, man. Yeah. We're really excited to hear. Thanks. When, when do you have a timeline for that? It comes out August 11th. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, what's the name? The, ba- uh, the, the, the name's called La Optimist. Uh, I was uh, in Barcelona and I went to, I, uh, <laughs> All right, fuck it. I'll say this one too. <laughs> I was at, yes, I was sir. on a cruise and I uh, was like in a situation with my girlfriend. I'm like, fuck this. This sucks. 
I took a little acid. I, I started walking in Barcelona. You don't have good acid acid trips. This is the problem. No, yeah. this is... I, I'm a fucking idiot. Every time I'm yeah. sad, I go like... Oh, go let's, trip acid. Let's extend yeah, this, this is, motherfucker. Yeah, you know, right. Like, let's just stretch this oh, out. I'm make so it really depressed. Dark. Let's just make it for nine hours. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, fuck, why am I doing this to myself? But... Um, I, w- I was walking around the street and I was kind of crying because I was like, like, we were like kind of breaking up and I've, th- I've only had one girlfriend in my life. I've been like a sex addict my whole life. So I just have like a bunch of one night stands normally. And I finally had a girlfriend and I really loved her and it was the first turmoil of it. And I'm like, and it was bad. It was bad. Damn. Like I, I took absinthe, I spilled it and I burned myself and on the boat and I was in, having second degree burns oh my and God. I... <laughs> I blamed it on her. <laughs> uh, just blamed it on. I blamed it on her. I'm like, we can't be in a fight because I, I almost burned the whole boat down. And, and I, let's talk about that later, actually. Yeah. Um, and anyway, back to the why we were fighting, and we were we were fighting. It was my first fight, so I walked into Barcelona, kind of crying. I'm like smoking a cigarette, just like very cliche, just like Wes Anderson film style. Yeah. yeah. Just like in the dark, and this like uh, this uh, this nice uh, Spanish lady is like. You know, there's beauty in the darkness. You just got to be optimistic. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to name I'm the optimist because yeah. I needed to uh, sometimes feel. You got to feel shit because I've always been afraid to feel things because I'm afraid of sadness. So that's why I always write optimistic songs. And the first time I really felt sad, I'm like, I was just going to suppress it. And um, the acid did not let that happen. Yeah, and, it does. Uh, and this old lady did not let that happen too. And yeah. she hugged me and we're crying and it was a nice moment. Wow. So I, that's why I named the record Lamont. Hell Hell yeah. So. I've noticed that that's a common theme for you. You do you do try to communicate a lot of optimism in your lyrics. Like, yeah. Is there a reason behind that? Like, is there an intention you set behind that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sad as fuck, you know? I do- <laughs> I'm my low dopamine. I drink all the time. I'm, I'm working every day. You know, I, I deplete my body all the time, as every musician does, because that's the only way to make it in this industry is to just play 200 shows a year and, you know, wake up at 6 a.m. to drive to eight hours to the next show. So we're all depleted and we all just try to f- fake a smile on our face a lot of the times because music is important. Yeah. So I uh, realized that, you know, that's the beauty of it. So I'm always trying to write optimistic songs selfishly for myself yeah. so I don't so you at least sing happy songs when you're feeling sad I'm like <laughs> wake the fuck up Andy you yeah. know it's always the first song like yeah. oh shit oh my god a bug in my afro this is awesome <laughs> I'm in Florida dog this is wild oh yeah um, but yeah I don't know I, I write optimistic songs for me mostly cause I get you know when you're low dopamine you wake up low dopamine you don't want to show up to a town sad yeah. so like you gotta turn yourself on every night and uh, I felt like you know I look myself in the mirror and try to pump myself up and I want to pump everyone else up like if I could do it you could do it too because it life is beautiful and we shouldn't uh, you know dopamine's gonna kill us but we're working on something that's more important and that's music so yeah. I care about that so oh yeah that's dude it's it. awesome yeah, thanks. speaking of that <clears throat> we do a little segment like a story behind the song segment on our podcast so you got a song prep. I for, like, why did I take mushrooms? This is bad. Dude, no, you're good. Okay. We're jamming, bro. Okay, you're flowing it. now. Let's go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here, you, you need me to help Yeah, you? help me out. Thank right. you. All right, I got you. I got you. I thought this podcast was going to end in like 15 minutes before the mushroom kicked in, but oh, here we go. Well, well, here. <laughs> <laughs> We've been flowing, bro. It sounds so good. It feels good. Anyway, tell me about your uncle. <laughs> See, my uncle, my uncle's a, a car mechanic, and... Uh, they live in Moorhead City, North Carolina. Really? Yeah. Do they love you? Do they? I think so. That's good. Yeah. I hope so. My uncle hates me. <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, secretly hates Yeah, he tried me. to take me out of the will. <laughs> he tried to take you out of the will? Yeah, that's a true story as well. Uh, I don't know. My, my family's kind of greedy, and um, my mom always, uh, she's always been the sweetest and never talked, so I was always the one being vocal about everything. And... Uh, he didn't like that. So, uh, you know, so I always protect my mom, and that's why uh, I actually wrote this song because she, uh, you know, she's, she always fights with depression and stuff, and I didn't want her to feel sad because I loved her very much. So I wrote this song. It's called Some Days. 
I wanna be your rock Your Saturday cartoon I wanna be the jam Hell, your peanut butter too Cause when you're feeling blue I'll try to color in you Just to be the man I never was to you Some days you feel great Some days you feel so alone Don't let sorrow drown into tomorrow Take it as it goes Gotta take life as it goes. Hey, hey uh, Andy, play a solo. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Some days you feel great. Some days you feel so alone Don't let your sorrow drown into tomorrow Take it as it goes You gotta take life as it goes Even if your uncle kinda blows <laughs> Don't let your sorrow drown into tomorrow Take it as it goes Gotta take life as it goes. Let's go. All right. Hell Thank yeah. you. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my mom. She's a bad bitch. I love my mom. Dude, Andy, thank you so much for just chilling and hanging out, being oh, real man. and opening up. Dude, maybe hands down, one of the best podcasts I've ever oh, done. Oh, thanks, bro. Andy, I knew it would be great. I appreciate you, bro. Can't wait to hear La Optimist coming out, dude. Cool, this summer, thanks. it's going to be awesome, man. Anything else that you want to share with us and the crew here? Um, just uh, unapologetically be yourself all the fucking time because who fucking cares? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go. Well, that's the wrap on this episode of the Sugar Shack Podcast. Make sure you're following us. Subscribe. Follow Andy Frasco on Instagram. Uh, follow his content, man. That's awesome. That's another one. Let's Hell party. Yeah, let's go. Lakers playing an hour. Let's get this. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, everybody. One more time for Andy Frasco in the UN. Hell yeah. Thanks, y'all. Have a great night. Sugar, 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 Sit back, relax, because it's time for another podcast. Sugar shack, we're throwing them back at the sugar shack.